Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this silky smoke ink drop effect in Blender. To get started, we're first going to create a simulation, and then we'll go into the material and create that really cool look. Of course, when starting out, we're not going to need the default cube, so let's go ahead and press X and get rid of it. I'm going to press Shift A and add in a UV sphere, and this is the object that we're going to be using to emit the smoke. From there, I'm going to go over to Object, down to Quick Effects, and then Quick Smoke. This will automatically add a basic domain for us, and currently it doesn't look good, and we'll go ahead and change the settings in just a second. I'm going to scale up the domain somewhere around here, and then drag it up so it's sitting on the grid floor. What we want is for this UV sphere to start out below the domain, and then shoot up right about here, and then the smoke will fly forward. This gives it a really cool effect. So to do this, we're going to drag it below the domain. And on frame one, make sure your cursor is on frame one, I'm going to add in a location keyframe. So hit I and then add in a location. I'm gonna to skip to frame 20, drag this up into the domain, somewhere around here will probably be good, and then hit I and add in another location keyframe. Another thing we're gonna do is change the interpolation mode from these two keyframes to linear, because right now it's using a curve to smooth out the animation, so with them selected, I'm going to press T and select Linear. Very good. So now let's go into the domain settings and change it how we want. So first off, I'll select my domain and go over to the Physics tab. The resolution, before we change that, I'm going to scroll down all the way to the Cache setting and change the type from Replay over to Modular. Then over in the resolution, we're going to go up to a value of 256. This is quite a high resolution, so if you have a slower computer, you can probably get away with 160. But since I want a lot of resolution, I'm going to bring this up to 256. Another thing we're going to do is animate the time scale value. So as the UV sphere enters the domain, the time scale is going to slow down, making it look like it just entered water and it's slowly moving across. So at frame 10, I'm going to hover my mouse over the time scale and add in a keyframe. I'm going to jump to frame 30 and set the time scale down to a value of about 0.5 and then add in another keyframe. So it looks like the smoke is going to slow down as the time goes on. Scrolling down into the other settings of the domain, I'm going to turn on Adaptive Domain and then open up this panel. This threshold value we need to make sure we turn down. If you don't turn this down, you're going to get these weird splotches where the smoke just disappears instantly, and that's because the Adaptive Domain is cutting it off. The threshold value controls how dense the smoke needs to be in order for it to be cut off. So if this was all the way up to 1, it would get rid of almost all of the smoke. So we're going to set this a lot lower. Let's go with a value of 0.001. The gas settings, we're going to set the density, and this is how fast the smoke will rise. We're going to go with a value of about 0.5. And the heat value, this also correlates with how fast the smoke rises. We're going to bring that lower to 0.7. I've played around with the vorticity value, and I think a value of 0 actually looks the best for this simulation. So that's where we're going to leave it on. The end frame down here, I'm going to set up to 200, and I'm going to turn on is resumable. Now let's go into the flow settings. I'm going to select my flow object and make sure the flow behavior is set to inflow. What I want is for the inflow to turn off right when it hits frame 20. So I'm gonna to skip to frame 20 and add in a keyframe for the use flow option. Go to the next frame, frame 21, and turn this off and then add in another keyframe. Oh, I added it in the wrong spot. Add it right here. The initial temperature, I'm going to set this to a value of 1.5, and this will help the smoke look just a little bit better and move a little bit differently. And finally, underneath the flow source, we're going to set the surface emission to 1 and the volume emission to a value of 1 as well. So the inside of the UV sphere will also emit smoke. I'm going to turn on initial velocity and set the source value up to 2. This will give it more velocity once the UV sphere stops, and so the smoke will rise up. Finally, I'm going to add in a turbulence force field, so we press shift A, go underneath force field, and add in a turbulence force field. I'm going to set the strength of this force field to 0.6, and the size all the way up to 1, so it's a lot bigger. And the flow option, I'm going to set this to 0.2, and then finally, to give it some randomness, I'm going to bring up the noise amount to 0.5. With all of that done, I think we are ready to bake, so I'm going to select my domain once again, and I might scale it up a little bit more somewhere around here or so. Make sure you save your project just in case this crashes. And once you've done that, we are ready to bake. So I'm gonna set the end frame in the timeline to 200 as well. 
and then I'm going to click on wait before you bake you might want to scale down the domain a little bit. When I first clicked bake the smoke simulation did not turn out very good and I didn't like how it looked. The reason for this was because the domain size was really large. So what I did is I scaled down the domain and the user sphere to about this dimension. We can see the domain size is about four and a half and then the UV sphere is about one meter long. This gave me a lot more better results. So before you bake, make sure you scale down the domain to about that size and then you'll be good to go. All right, the simulation has finished baking and here is our result. I'm gonna go ahead and skip through a couple of these frames to see exactly what it looks like. And as you can see, the smoke does look pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is set up the material to give it a really cool look. I'm gonna go ahead and split this view and switch this over to the shader editor and then I'll press N to close off that panel. I'll select my domain and we're not going to need the principled shader so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Instead, we're gonna be using a shader and a volume absorption shader. If we take the volume and plug it into the volume of the material output, let's go ahead and skip to about 45. And another thing I'll do is I'll position the camera right in the front view. So I'll press one on my number pad, then I'll hit control, alt and zero to snap the camera to place. You can select it, G middle mouse button and drag it back and place it in the middle. Now let's continue working on the material. To get this to actually look good, let's first press Z and go into rendered view. And we can see the whole domain is now filled up with this volume absorption. Let's talk about the difference between volume absorption and volume scatter. Volume absorption will absorb some of the light as it passes through the volume. This is very useful to create black smoke or colored glass objects. On the other side, volume scatter will scatter the light in other directions. The anisotropy defines where the direction of the light will scatter to. A value of zero will let the light scatter evenly in all directions. A negative value will let the light scatter going backwards and a positive value will let the light scatter going forwards. In this case, to get a really cool effect, we're just gonna be using the volume absorption. So it will absorb the light and give it a really cool look. We first need to define where the volume absorption is supposed to be. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and add in an input and a volume info node. If we take the density value, plug that into the density of the volume absorption, now we can see it's in the correct spot. I'm also gonna go over to the render settings and switch it over to cycles. I'm gonna use my GPU as the device and another thing that we're gonna do is go over to the world settings and bring the color of the world up to almost white. Next up, we're gonna add some density to this. To do this, we'll add in a converter and a math node and place it here and switch it over to the multiply. This bottom value now controls the density of the smoke. Let's go up to a value of 75. There we can see it and it's looking pretty cool. The color you can set in the volume absorption and I'm just gonna give it a very slight blue color somewhere around here, and then for the value, I'm gonna drag it a little bit higher. You don't wanna go completely white because it will look like this, just very close to it, somewhere around 0.969, and that will be pretty good. Next up, to give this even more definition, we're gonna use a color ramp to determine where the density is. So add in a color ramp and place it in between the volume info and the multiply node. Over in the color ramp, we're gonna add in a couple of new handles, so I'm gonna hit that plus sign, drag it over to the left, I'll drag the black closer this way, somewhere like this, and I'll set this all the way up to white. You can already see the effect that we're starting to get. Next up, I'll add in another handle, drag it over this way, and we're going to clamp a black value in between two white values. So I'll add in one more. Finally, we'll add in another one, and right in the middle, this is going to be black. And there you can see it, this is the effect that we're getting. I'm gonna select this one and switch it over to the white color. And I might ease this up just a little bit. Something like that will look pretty good. And as you can see, with it, with the color ramp turned off, this is the look. And then with it turned on, it's a lot more interesting. Now let's set up our render settings. First off, I'm going to select my UV sphere and I don't want this to show up in the rendered view. So come over to the top right and turn on the camera icon and then turn it off for the UV sphere. I'm also gonna turn it off in the viewport so we just get this effect. And now I'll show you how to render in both Eevee and in Cycles. So with Cycles, I'm gonna set the render amount all the way to 30. And that's basically all you really need to do for the Cycles. If we switch over to Eevee, it might look a little bit weird. And that is because we need to open up Volumetrics, set the tile size down to two pixels, turn on Volumetric Shadows, and you still might notice the smoke looks very strange. The reason for that is because the samples are a little bit lower. 
If we bring the samples up to 256, now it will look a lot better. Unfortunately though, with a sample of 256, it's actually longer to render in Eevee than in Cycles. So if you want to render in Eevee, you can, but I found it's much faster in Cycles. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and set an output and render this into an animation. But there you go, that is how you create a silky smoke ink drop effect in Blender. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you created something cool, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram. That'll do it, I hope you guys have a happy new year, and I look forward to creating even more tutorials for you guys in 2021. Take care, and I'll see you next year.